Spiritual truths seem contradictory in nature. They are contradictory because the universe is comprised of different dimensions, and on these different dimensions, different rules apply. For example, at the most fundamental level, we are all one. And yet, in the physical dimension, we are temporarily experiencing our lives through an individual perspective. So is it true that we are one? Yes. Is it true that we are individuals? Yes. Depending on the perspective you take. In essence, both are true from a certain perspective. There are two distinct camps within the spiritual tradition. The first is the create your own reality camp. The second is the present moment awareness camp. The philosophy behind create your own reality is that you, being an extension of source itself, are imbued with that same ability to create, and you create with the mind. You came here to earth to facilitate the expansion of source consciousness through your individual life. Expansion that is the byproduct of continually deciphering what is wanted and following your emotional guidance system in the direction of those desires. In this philosophy, desire is seen as good. It can seem as if people in the create your own reality camp are allowing themselves to escape the now in favor of something in the future that is wanted. Of course, they will tell you that if you focus on what is, all you get is more of what is. The philosophy behind present moment awareness is that all desire is a byproduct of aversion, and therefore there cannot be wanting or seeking without pain. The continual movement away from unwanted towards wanted is a state of unconsciousness. Being a part of source consciousness, you are capable of not just experiencing life, but of observing yourself experiencing life. Remaining in the subjective, non-reactive perspective is the goal. Consciousness exists outside the illusion of time where all there is is the now. And because the goal is to become fully conscious and objectively aware, we come into the now with no need to be anywhere else. By coming into the now, and being fully present with what is, fully embracing what is, you stop the endless cycle of aversion and craving. There is no need to create a different reality than what is. Ironically, it can seem as if the people in the present moment awareness camp are removing themselves from the game of expansion called life. Of course, they will tell you that they are more present for real life than anyone else. So how do these two seemingly contradictory truths, which are both true, fit together? All there is is now. No other reality actually exists. Even if you are thinking about the past, you are thinking about the past in the now. Even if you are thinking about the future, you are doing it in the now. The question is, how aware are you of what you are thinking about and feeling in the now? Often we focus on something that we want because of something that is unwanted about the now. We have an aversion, which is resistance to something, and so we are pushing against what is unwanted. When this is the case, the best thing to do is to embrace the very thing you are trying to escape from or avoid, and to become completely present with what is. When we are plagued by painful thoughts that spiral with momentum, we can stop the momentum by becoming present, so we are observing our thoughts and emotions instead of becoming lost in the illusion that we are our thoughts and feelings. By doing this, we settle squarely into the perspective of our eternal self. We are fully conscious of all aspects of ourselves. We become non-reactive, and all seeking stops. Before we go on, you must understand that you are the junction where two main aspects of you meet, the eternal self and the temporal self. When you are completely present in the now observing your temporal self, you have settled into the perspective of the eternal self, pure beingness. What does the state of being in the now afford us? The answer is choice. The choice of what perspective to take. The choice to play the game of desire and expansion, or to not play the game at all. This is the real free will that people were meant to discover that they have by coming into this physical life. Until you reach the point where you are capable of stepping out of the temporal perspective of the ego, 
and being completely present with yourself and your world in the now. Subjectivity or objectivity is not a choice. Subjectivity was the prison you inherited upon your birth. You could not perceive the gap between your real self and your thoughts, your real self and your feelings, and so you mistook yourself for them. You mistook everything you thought as truth. You lived entirely from the ego. It is an identity you would have defended at any cost. This is the cause of the reactivity you experienced for so long, as well as the limited perspective that you had. The ego wanted to get away from what was unwanted by virtue of seeking the wanted. Your whole life was spent in pursuit of something other than what is. The minute that you learn how to step into the place of present moment awareness, you are no longer subject to the ups and downs because you see that you are not the ups and downs. You are the perceiver of those ups and downs. You see that you are the space or the stillness in which thoughts and feelings take place. This brings an immense state of peace. And here is where one begins to live in a state of self-actualized godhood. From this point on, you are free to create your reality with your mind intentionally through the use of deliberate focus. But now your choices are no longer the byproduct of aversion, and so there is no craving. You choose which thoughts to follow and allow to gain momentum and thus attract experiences into your reality. Your mind is a tool of yours, instead of you being at the mercy of it. Instead of craving, we recognize our infinite creator nature and choose. We choose to be wealthy or not. And we do not choose so from a place of pain. In other words, I don't want money because I'm poor. I want it because I'm saying yes to that perspective. Inspiration is what causes our movement towards things that we choose. The ego, our individual identity that we call by our name, becomes a choice, like a tight skin that we are no longer stuck to. We can now choose in any given moment to live life through its perspective, or to instead slip out of it and live through the perspective of the eternal self. We are now exercising free will. We are completely in the now. We are making choices from the now. We are aware of why we are making those choices. We are creating expansion in the universe consciously. We begin to create a reality by virtue of choice and free will instead of by virtue of resisting or hating the one we are currently living in. We see all things as transient. We see that the now is a byproduct of thought that has come before. We embrace it. We see the beauty of creating new so we embrace that also. We focus on things we wish to see created in the now, so they may manifest in the now for us to observe and experience. We choose to live. We are no longer here by what feels like default. He who is truly free is not absent of ego. The goal should not be to get rid of ego. It serves a purpose, and it can also be a lot of fun. After all, without it, self-actualization could not ever take place. Our goal should be instead to recognize and acknowledge ego for what it is, and then use it in a way that is beneficial. Ego is part of you, but it is not all of who you are. He who is truly free has the choice to experience ego, or step back from ego, or slip out of its skin. He who is truly free has the choice to embrace what is, or focus on what is preferred in the now. Choice is why these seemingly contradictory spiritual paths are in fact complementary. They fit together perfectly like peanut butter and jelly provided they are unfolding within a person who is aware of their ability to consciously choose.